gonna be a little low energy today because I got a bit of a headache, but that's okay. Today I just wanted to talk to you guys about my favorite Twilight Zone episodes. Now, these are episodes that either creeped me out as a kid or are episodes that I just always go back and repeat, I'm excited to watch, or ones that made me go made me be like, whoa, when I was younger. It's hard to pick my favorite episode, you guys know if you've watched any of my videos. I'm obsessed with The Twilight Zone, I love Rod Serling, so it's hard to choose, just five. But let's just get into it. So these are in no particular order, I love them all. I love all the episodes, but I just wanted to pick some of my favorites. The first one is It's a Good Life. This is season three, episode eight. It is written by Jerome Bixby, and it's a creepy ass story. So we learn that there's a town where either it has been removed from America, from Earth, or all of the other residents have been removed. So it's just this town that's left. And we're told that this this town is being harassed by a monster. They keep talking about a monster and you're like, oh gosh, who is this monster? And they show the monster and it's this young six-year-old boy. So the creepy thing about this one is if the boy is unhappy, he can either turn you into something else or he can send you to a cornfield. Now, it's not as easy as just making him happy because he can actually read minds. So everyone in the town has to walk around with a smile on their face, thinking happy thoughts, and just going about their business, doing everything they can to appease this young boy for fear that they'll be sent into the cornfield. So this one's really, really creepy. The thought of a, like a young boy running an entire town. And my favorite ep part of the episode is when his mother's talking to the delivery guy and she's saying that he made this little monster the other day, this like animal, because he can turn things into other things, like he makes a three-headed gopher. And she said that it had really sharp teeth and it tried to bite him. And she says, I was kind of hoping that. And then she stops. I love this episode because all everybody's so uncomfortable. Like the actors are just fantastic. Everyone in the town just hates their life and they just have to go with along with it. I mean, even the mom is wishing pain on her young boy. It's just, it's a crazy episode and it really showcases how these people are really trapped inside this town and forced to be happy even though they're miserable. So I really like that. Another thing just about the Twilight Zone in general is I feel like a lot of horror or sci-fi or you know whatever you want to call it, I feel like it's not really taken seriously because people don't think that it's anything except blood and guts and I think that the Twilight Zone really challenges that idea. I think that a lot of the episodes have meaning behind the story, meaning behind the words. So uh, that's another reason why I love it. So now let's move on to The Invaders. This is in season two, episode 15, and this was actually written by Richard Matheson. So I'd mentioned this in a previous video that Richard Matheson wrote more episodes except more episodes than anyone except Rod Serling for the Twilight Zone series. So there's a few of his in here. So this one I will say is kind of a slow episode. There's no dialogue in it, so it seems to kind of like drag on. There's a woman in kind of a house built in the middle of nowhere. She's not surrounded by anyone. And this UFO lands on her roof and the entire episode is her just fighting these miniature little spacemen and they start attacking her. So she starts attacking them. I mean, I guess she kind of attacks them first, but they land on her roof. Like what's a girl to do? So you go through the episode just being like, oh, this woman's being invaded by these miniature spacemen. And then at the very end, you find out that after she destroys them, destroys the ship, it like zooms in on the ship and the ship says that it's from the US. So you're like, whoa. This episode really messed with my head as a kid and just made me question everything, which is why I love The Twilight Zone so much. So I really, really like this episode. It's one of my favorites, even though it is like a slower, relaxed episode, but it's one that pays off definitely in the end. The next one I want to talk about is The Monsters Are Due on Maple Street. So this one is from season one, episode 22. Rod Serling actually wrote this one. And this one I love so, so, so much. Okay, so it's about this street, this, these people on the street, they see a meteor pass over and it ruins like their, uh, their power, essentially, their electricity, their stove, their automobiles, like nothing will work after they see this meteor. And this young kid, they're like, oh, it must be a meteor. Oh, the meteor must have done something. And this young kid's like, nope, it's aliens for sure. And so the town listens to him and he says that he's heard about this, you know, in another story, that it's aliens and that, that before this happened, they've like sent people in that look like people to live in the town to like infiltrate, but they're actually aliens. And so the town, the people in the town, the people on that street start turning against each other, 
hurting each other, accusing each other, killing each other. It's it's a really intense episode and it builds quite rapidly. So, okay, so the, at the end you actually see the spacemen and they're watching the street and they say something along the lines of that you go to a street and you just like kind of insinuate that aliens have landed, but they pick the most dangerous enemy they can find, which is themselves. The aliens basically just go around from town to town pick a street and let them attack each other and the aliens just kind of sit back and watch because they don't have to do anything because humans are stupid and all we do is turn on each other. So I think that one's um, just a really great episode, really fun. Next we have Eye of the Beholder. This is season two, episode six. This one was also written by Rod Serling and this is just such an iconic episode. I feel like if, if nobody's seen the episode, if, I feel like if nobody's even watched The Twilight Zone, they know this episode. It's just, it's so good. So this one's about a woman who keeps getting surgery because she is ugly and kind of the outcast, kind of like a mutant for the town. And people scream when they see her and she just wants to look like everybody else. And so you go through the entire episode kind of like you know, thinking, man, what's wrong with her? And they, they just, like, all the doctors and nurses just talk about how bad they feel about her and how she's got, like, distorted bone structure and features, and you're like, oh, gosh, what is she going to look like? So they get to the end where they're taking off her wraps to unveil her face because they want to know if the last procedure worked. They take off her bandages, and she looks like us, like a human. She's gorgeous, you know? They unveil this like beautiful woman and then it shows all of the doctors and the nurses and they all have these like weird pig faces. There's also a leader who's, who's on television who's kind of preaching conformity, saying that anybody who doesn't look like them should be put away and it's just a really interesting episode. One, it really does dive into like beauty is in the eye of the polder obviously, hence the title of the episode, but also it really does kind of question societal beauty standards and you know why we see people certain ways and it's just a really good episode I think it has a lot of positive meaning behind it it's not perfect for sure like definitely when the doctors and nurses are walking around except for that final scene you can see their faces and they look like humans <laughs> but that's you know what I mean it's I'm not even gonna blame them I think it's a great episode I think it has good meaning behind it and it's one of my absolute favorite and one of the most iconic episodes of the Twilight Zone ever made. Okay, the last one I want to talk about today is The Mystic Seer, and this is season two, episode seven. This was written by Richard Matheson as well. So this one, we have a couple that goes into a diner. There's a little magic seer box on the table. They start asking it questions, and the man who's very superstitious realizes that this magic seer is giving him answers about his future. They, the, it warns them not to leave the diner before three. They leave the diner before three and almost get hit by a car. So he goes back and asks it even more questions, ask it where, asks it where it's going to live, where they're going to be, like how, if they're going to make it to New York okay, if he's going to get a job. He's asking all of these questions about the future. So in the episode, his wife is getting irritated and he, she's telling him, don't you understand that you have the ability to change your own future? And it takes him a while to realize that, but all of a sudden he's like, oh, I do have that ability, you know? And for me, this is such a powerful episode because I think a lot of the times we tend to just get comfortable wherever we are, even if that's in an uncomfortable place, even if we're not fully happy. And I think that this episode really is just like a wake-up call, you know? You don't have to rely on anything else. You can make your own future. You have that ability to do whatever you want with your life. And that's just such a cool episode. And then at the very end, after they leave the diner, you see another couple come in and they rush to that same booth and they're asking the magic seer questions. And the husband's like, can we leave today? And it's saying no. And he's like, when, are, when will we be able to leave? Can we leave tomorrow? And it's saying no. And they're stuck in this town and they're stuck because something else is telling them that they have to be. And so it's just, I think, a really powerful episode. That box also is just such an iconic prop also from the Twilight Zone series. But I just love these episodes so much. I mean, Rod Serling is a genius, truly. I mean, it's not just blood and guts. It's not just sci-fi. It's not just horror. There's so much more that goes into the episodes. And I really grew up watching this. We watched Twilight Zone constantly, every holiday. It was on for 24 hours and we would just have a marathon of it. So I really did grow up just having a special place for it. Now that I'm older and I can look back and really dive in and analyze the series, it's just that much better. Leave me a comment down below and let me know your favorite episode of The Twilight Zone because it's so hard to choose 
only five that I love, you know, the series is so good and almost all of the episodes I'm just so in love with. So let me know what your favorite episode is down below and I will see you tomorrow with another horror video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.